Now we'll move on to discuss higher order functions, such as learning and memory. These higher order functions require the cooperation of multiple centers within the brain and the processing of massive amounts of information. Using this lateral view of the brain, we'll highlight the specialized regions and centers of the cerebral cortex. In the occipital lobe, the visual cortex, the general interpretive area, the speech center or Broca's area, and the somatic motor association area or premotor cortex. The cerebral cortex performs a number of higher order functions, and these require the action and communication of certain specialized regions in the brain. Specialized centers and regions that perform these are, number one, the general interpretive area. Number two is the visual cortex. Number three, the auditory cortex. Number four, the speech center. Number five, the primary motor cortex. Number six, the premotor cortex. And number seven, the primary sensory cortex. Specialized Regions of the Cerebral Cortex Key centers within the cerebral cortex include the general interpretive area. This is where information from the sensory association area flows to the specialized brain center. The center is vital to interpreting words that are read and heard. The speech center, which is also known as Broca's area. This functions as a motor center for breathing and vocalization patterns required to produce speech. The prefrontal cortex. This has been reported to be the most complex brain area. And this area is responsible for complex learning and reasoning. It communicates with the limbic system to contribute to emotional context. As mentioned earlier, the brain is divided into two hemispheres and special functions such as speech can be lateralized to one hemisphere. Higher order functions can be localized to one of two of the cerebral hemispheres. An example is the lateralization of speech. It's been estimated that approximately 70% of individuals have speech lateralized to the left hemisphere. The left hemisphere contains both Broca's and Wernicke's area, both of which are involved in speech. Evidence for this has come from anatomical and functional imaging studies. It's been estimated that 90 to 95% of right handed men and women that both handedness and speech are lateralized to the left hemisphere. In individuals who are left handed, there's a 60 to 70% left hemisphere dominance in spoken language. Broca's area and Wernicke's area share neural information. It's reported that Wernicke's area interprets written or spoken words. Then, this information is projected to Broca's area. From Broca's area, projections to the primary motor cortex result in words we speak in response. Many of our normal everyday functions are based on memories, memories stored within the brain. Memory regions of the brain include the amygdala, the hippocampus, the striatum, and the mammillary bodies. There are two main types of memories, short-term memory and long-term memory. Short-term memory allows a recall of information for a few minutes or up to an hour or more. There's evidence to suggest that short-term memory involves changes in electrochemical events as opposed to structural changes in the brain. Based on experiments designed to test recall, the most effective short-term recall occurs with information or words in groups of 7 plus or minus 2. This is known as chunking the information. For example, a definition of biology is more accurately recalled in short-term memory when groups of 5 to 7 words are memorized at once as opposed to memorizing 2 to 3 sentences at once. Long-term memory. Long-term memory provides recall of information for years. The hippocampus region of the brain is required for both learning and the conversion of information from short-term memory to long-term memory. 
structural changes in the brain as part of long-term memory are further supported by the fact that most amnesia patients have some loss of recent events but they can retain lifelong memories. There are a number of models of learning. One example is the multi-store model. In this model of memory, the repetition of learned information or tasks transfers it to long-term memory. Experiments on long-term memory have revealed the fact that likely structural changes in the brain take place, such as long-term potentiation, an increase in the number of synaptic end bulbs, and an increase in neuronal branching patterns. The brain and the central nervous system are affected by diseases and conditions. The following are examples of diseases and conditions that affect the brain. Number one, senility. This is also known as dementia. It's characterized by a loss of cognitive abilities beyond what's expected for the normal effects of aging. Number two, Alzheimer's disease. This is a degenerative terminal disease that's the most common form of dementia. This disease includes the formation of amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles outside and around the neurons in the brain. Number three, cerebral palsy. This is a motor condition that causes developmental problems and disability. The cerebrum is the area of the brain affected by this condition. And complications with interuterine development contributes to the cause of cerebral palsy. Number four, epilepsy. Epilepsy is characterized by recurrent seizures. There are many types of epilepsy with different types of seizures. Anti-seizure medication can control and reduce the frequency of seizures in most patients. 